Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be going to be talking about DNA replication. Uh, before we give details about DNA replication, let's quickly talk about DNA structure. Remember, the DNA structure is made up of two strands of polynucleotide. This is one strand, and this is another strand. Now, these two strands, they are actually connected, or they are connected by bases. You can see this is nitrogenous base. You have four different group of nitrogen but this is adenine this is thymine guanine and cytosine adenine is always combining with thymine you can see that c is always combining with a c is always combining with g so they are complementary base pair when we say complementary it means g is always complementary c and a is always complementary t all right so this is a very simple structure now take a look at the backbone again the backbone comprises of a phosphate group and sugar, a five carbon sugar. Now, you realize that you hear some statements like uh, one of the strands is moving in one direction while the other one is moving in the opposite direction. They will tell you that they are anti parallel. What do they mean by the fact that they are anti parallel? Take a look at this structure of this sugar. You realize that this is the oxygen here is facing upward, it's moving towards this direction, all right? I'll take a look at this, it's facing backward, but we will not use that to explain that. But this is actually moving in this direction, and this is moving in that direction. When studying DNA structure, you we use the term. This is in the direction of 3' prime to 5', prime, and this is the direction of 5' prime to 3'. Prime. What do they mean by that? Now, take let's count this carbon. This is carbon 1. The first carbon is the one that is being attached to the nitrogenous base. So this is carbon 1, this is carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4. And carbon 5, this is the bond here, carbon 5. The same thing here, carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, if 3 prime to 5 prime means that the phosphate group here is attached to carbon at the point, is, this is wrong, at the point 3. All right? Note that it's attached to the, carb, uh, the phosphate group is attached to the carbon at the point 3, at carbon 3. Why the next one is attached to the, to the phosphate at carbon five? So this is three prime to five prime. If you take a look at this structure here, you realize that here the hydrosyl group at the end actually is the three is attached to the three carbon atom. Why at the end of this you have the five carbon atom being attached to the phosphate? But let's take a look at this place. You realize that in this place, the phosphate group here is attached to the carbon at carbon five. This is carbon 5, this bond here, this joint here is carbon 5. Why the hydrogen group is attached at carbon 3? So this is 5 prime to 3 prime. Why in this case this is 3 prime? Because the phosphate is attached to carbon 2. This is 3 prime to 5 prime. So this basic explanation is very essential to understanding the, how DNA replicates. Note again that the AT, we have two hydrogen bonds. Why the GC have three hydrogen bonds? You know that the A and the G, they are actually nitrogen base that possesses two rings, while thymine and cytosine possess a single ring. The structure is actually being displayed on the board. All right? So note this fact. They are complementary. A is always combining to T and G is combining to C. So if I give you a structure like this, for example, let's take a look at this structure. You know that the complementary base of this is simple, is C. Complementary base of this is G, because a, C is always combining to G. G is always combining to C. Complementary base of this is actually A. Complementary base of this is what? T. Because they are complementary, they are always complementary. A is always combining to T. And G it's always combining to C. So, with this understanding, let's take a look at how DNA replicates. We are aware that DNA, they are double helix structure, they are twisted ladder like structure. So, this is like a twisted ladder like structure. We can decide to straighten it up. The diagram of the straightening form is being displayed on the board. Now, take a look at this straightening form, but let's work with this twisted ladder like form. Now, DNA replication starts at a site called origins of replication. Origin of replication. Origin of replication. Okay. 
Now, so at this point, at this point, at this origin of replication, an enzyme regarded as the helicase attached to the hydrogen bond, combining, remember these two strands, these two strands, they are combined by hydrogen bonds, right? So the enzyme called helicase actually attack these bonds and break the bond. So at this point, this is actually the origin of replication. So helicase break the bond between these two strands and the strands actually spread out. They spread out. Now, why is this strand that is spread out? Why do they not combine again? They are capable of combining again. But what we call the SSB protein, the single strand binded protein, SSB protein, quickly combine to this base to prevent them from what coming back together. So here you have the single strand SSB protein. This protein, the single strand binding protein being attached to each of the strands that have been broken by the helicase. They are attached to them so that they to prevent them from what coming back together. Now note that this side they are still coiled to prevent this side from supercalling. An enzyme called what the topo isomerase. Topo iso um, in particular, the re enzyme is actually DNA gyrus. It's a type of topo isomerase enzyme. Actually prevents this aspect from what super coiling. So remember, helicase break the bond to prevent super coiling. Topo isomerase or DNA gyrus actually prevents prevents super coiling. And SSB protein attached to each pair to prevent them from joining together now let's take a look at the next stage the first stage this first stage is actually called the initiation stage all right now let's take a look at the next stage in the next stage it will involve the synthesis of a new strand these strands will have a new dna strand and this one will have a new dna strand in order to what have a two separate dna so the two separate dna that you have we have one old strand and a new strand that is, is, that is synthesized. This we have, this will be the old strand and a new strand will be synthesized. In order to have this, in order to start this synthesis of this um, new strand, an enzyme regarded as what the primase actually produce what we call primer. Now, remember, I explained before that one strand is five prime to three prime and the other strand is three prime to five prime so they are actually running anti-parallel this area where dna replication is taking place is called the replication folks please take note of that now once the ssb protein have separated them the next step is to begin the synthesis of a new strand of dna such that we will now have one old one and one new one, one old and one new. So we want to begin a complementary strand. How does this actually occur? Now, the first thing is a primase, an enzyme, produce RNA primer. The RNA primer actually begins the synthesis of this new strand. Remember, this strand is three strand to five um, um, prime. So the new RNA uh, strand that will be added is in the direction of the five prime to three prime. So a new RNA primer will produce a primase that will now synthesize a complementary. This is C and this will automatically be G. We will now have a new RNA primer beginning a synthesis of a new strand of DNA. Note that immediately the, the only function of this primer is to just start the process. DNA polymerase now take over. So DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase is actually the enzyme that is responsible for producing a new strand of DNA. So we now have a DNA polymer, polymerase producing a new strand from 5 prime to 3 prime. DNA polymerase only produced in this direction from 5 prime to 3 prime. So we now have here, we have this is GC. We now have here will be A, here will be C, here will be T, here will be C. And I believe you can add the rest because they are complementary base pair. Now, 
the reason why this is continuous is because this strand here is three strands to five uh, five prime. So DNA polymerase produce a strand in the, only in the direction of five prime to three prime. But here is actually five prime to three prime. So DNA polymerase cannot produce a continuous strand in this way. So what it does is it actually produces another DNA strand in the opposite direction, but in a broken form. I will explain that later. Note that this strand where DNA polymerase produces a strand that is actually continuous is called the leading strand. Why this strand where DNA polymerase produces a segment of DNA fragment? Because this strand is already a 5 prime to 3 prime. So DNA polymerase cannot produce another straight 5 prime to 3 prime to now produce in the opposite direction. So this strand is called the, what, the lagging strand. And DNA synthesis here occur in fragments. You have a segment of fragment, another segment is being produced, another segment is being produced. So different segments are being produced. These various segments that are produced, are, this segment is called Okazaki fragment, Okazaki fragment. So when you hear of the word Okazaki fragment, it is actually produced in the lagging strand. This is called the lagging strand. This is called the lagging strand because DNA sequences occur in fragments here. Why this is called the leading strand? Because DNA sequences occur continuously. Now, note this. The leading strand, this DNA um, sequences here, occur in the direction of the replication fork. Remember, helicase is continuously broken, uh, being uh, breaking the hydrogen bond in this place. So this place is continuous. So these sequences of DNA occur in the direction of the replication force. That is the direction where the, uh, reproduction, uh, replication of DNA is occurring. Why here is uh, DNA sequences is occurring in the opposite direction, in fragments. Now, after this process is continued, DNA synthesis is complete. But what happened to this fragment? They are actually sealed up by an enzyme called what? The ligase. So they are sealed up by an enzyme called what? The ligase. And once they are sealed up, you realize that we have a, a complementary base here. We also have a complementary base here. You can eventually put here, you know that here will become G, here will become T. So you can put that yourself. So you realize that the process of DNA sequences is kind of complete. So this is the basic process. Let's go through this again. We start from the origin of repl replication. We've mentioned that. Here, helicase break the structure open. From there, you have the SSB protein being attached to each strand. From there, you have the RNA, the primase producing a primer. The primase is actually the one that starts the sequences. DNA polymerase cannot start the process. So the primase just starts the RNA primer. Primase produces primer, and the primer starts the sequences. So once the primer starts the sequences, DNA polymerase now take over and now produce a new strand. Note that one strand is continuous, produced in what five prime to three prime direction, while the other strand is produced in the opposite direction. This strand that is continuous is, is in the direction of the replication for Why the one that is uh, discontinuous is in the opposite direction. And eventually, those fragments are sealed together by what the ligase enzyme, and eventually, the process is complete. We now have a complete two new DNA um, structure. One is old, the other one is new. This is old, and this is new. So this is the process of DNA replication. Now, for your information, note that this process occurs in the S phase of the cell cycle. We have a what we call the cell cycle. Cell cycle involves a cycle where we have the, you can see the diagram on the board, we have G1 phase, the S phase, we have the G2 phase, and we have now have the cell division phase. So the DNA replication occurs in the S phase of the cell cycle. This is the end of the video. In our next video, we'll be talking about DNA translation and transcription. Thanks for watching.